then let's get it started and bring to the stage your moderator for this panel from Dicebreaker. Please welcome Wheels. Hello. Just like that. Goodness gracious. Well, I don't even know where to say it. How's everyone doing? If you've not already been told, which I know you have because it was on a microphone, I'm Wheels from Dicebreaker. I'll be moderating this panel. Uh, we are the world's premier tabletop brand. If you like tabletop, then get on over there because we are doing all of the news, all of the features, all the reviews. And you might have heard, I don't know, it's, it's been a bit of an indie release, but there's this little game called Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, oh, a few fans in the audience. Uh, and it is all about and based, of course, on Dungeons and Dragons, which few more fans in the audience is a pretty big deal when it comes to tabletop. So I'm going to have everyone come out. And because there are literally 10 of them, I've written everyone's names down just in case. So I know what I'm like. I've got ADHD. Uh, so we will go from in sort of, thank you. We'll go in character uh, kind of order via the alphabet to make things easy. So we will start with everyone's favorite vampire. Can you please welcome Asterion played by Neil Newborn. who will be here in just a second. There we go. Would you want to come down here? You want to see me? Love you too, darling. We probably should have got you a microphone to start with, to be honest. No, not at all. I'm happy to share. Uh, next up, we've got everyone's favorite magical item-eating F-boy. It's Gail Tim Downey. Tim, sorry, I would, have, I would have got you some Boots of Speed or something for a snack, but we How don't have much you? time. Yeah. How dare you? <laughs> Next up, it's time to get a little bit wild in the forest. It's everyone's favorite big, beefy druid, Halcyn, played by Dave Jones. Coming at us in the, the elf form today, not, not the giant owl bear form, which is, I, I suppose is best for everyone. Right. Next up, speaking of people in the forest, it's Jahira, played by Tracy Wiles. <laughs> With a heart so big, it will literally threaten to burn out of her chest. It's Karlak, played by Hello. Stephanie Bayart. <laughs> Next up, don't look her in the eyes. She'll get very upset. It's Lazel, played by Devorah Wilde. Lazo. That's right, we're still going. Uh, everyone's most evil companion, it's Minthara, played by Emery Gregory. <laughs> and we've just got a few left. It's the voice that's literally inside your head, our narrator, Amelia Tyler. I'm definitely not biased, but it's the best girl, Shadowheart, Jennifer England. Hey. And last, in only a way that the alphabet could decide, it is Will, played by Theo Solomon. Hey. Now, okay, immediately, everyone's gonna notice a problem. We've been given four microphones for this panel. Uh, there are currently, well, including our, our sign interpreters, thank you so much for your service, um, I think about 14 of us on stage. So, we're gonna keep these questions nice and pointed, but just to kick things off, because this is, God, look at this, the gap between people. Just to kick things off, because this is a tabletop theme panel, can you please, if you're on this stage, please just raise your hand. If you have played, before working on this game, 
Dungeons and Dragons. Oh my goodness. All right, for each one of you then who has not raised their hand, first of all, why not? <laughs> and second of all, have you started yet? Uh, well, it just, well, first of all, it just never came up. Yeah? Um, but now, now I'm a big fan. Yeah. Because it's big magic, my friend. It's big magic. <laughs> That's what that is. I'm aware, of course, that you've all now featured, not all of you, but a, a large selection of you are now featured in a sort of official D&D actual play, which is very exciting. Um, but how many of you are just playing at home now? <laughs> Carlax, Stephanie Bear, do you want to talk a little bit more about how much you've played at home? Yes, yeah, so funnily enough, when I played D&D for the first time, I played as a barbarian. Excellent. I didn't want to learn the rules. Didn't want to learn the rules. Mm. Just point me at the thing and hit stuff, which turned out to be quite useful in the whole scope of things. So um, I picked up the game uh, when it came out on PlayStation 5. I picked a halfling bard who was quite sassy, and I died a lot. So what I did is I thought, why don't I play as Karlak? She's a barbarian. It's me in a game. <laughs> so that's been pretty cool. Mm. I was going to ask, because a couple of you have now done like a few live streams and things like that, playing as yourself, which is not necessarily something that you get the privilege to do as when you work on an RPG, um, what is it like playing your own character in a video game? I think it's just me. <laughs> just you. Yeah, I think Shadowheart, it's at least your girlfriend has played, right? Experience. So there's, like a, there's an element of um, kind of, I don't know, Uncanny Valley, just seeing yourself in a video game in the first place. But being a playable character as well, does that add a, a certain air of confusion to the whole mix? So I didn't want to play as Shadowheart, <laughs> mainly, and this is like entirely ego, because you get less of my lines. <laughs> so so um, my girlfriend, who's playing with me, um, is romancing me. <laughs> Which I think is an excellent solution, frankly. Whereas, if you play as Karlak, you get lots of extra lines because she likes talking to herself a lot. Is that, was that a character decision or is that your fault? <laughs> a bit of A? A bit of A. That's how she was written. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll throw to this couch over here because we've got um, a couple of characters here that some people might not have ever had in their party because obviously with Minthara, with Halsin, it's not necessarily one of the ones that you're kind of gifted right at the beginning. Uh, is there like a friendly rivalry between you two in the, in the way that, you know, usually you only get one, right? I'm, as far as I'm aware, there's no, I'm going to have Minthara and I'm going to have Halsin. Is there a little bit of a sort of uh, a friendly rivalry between the two of you? Oh, I don't know. I don't think no, it's like that. No, no, no. <laughs> we, we've pretty much come no, down on the no. same train, so <laughs> that'd be awkward. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no, there's no rivalry at all. But people put, should play Minthara. Very interesting character. I urge you to pursue her and uh, explore her, as it were. All is not as it seems. <laughs> and I'm if saying. you do, you definitely can't have him. <laughs> so you have to choose. <laughs> Make a choice wisely. Yes. <laughs> Okay, you're, you're hinting at something here that I wanted to talk about a little bit. Baldur's Gate 3 is potentially one of the raunchiest RPGs I've ever played in my life. Um, we've had uh, a few sort of like bits on a few of the sites that are run by Repop about the kind of like intimacy coordinators and things like that and various steps that have been taken to bring a certain air of elegance to some of the romance scenes in the game. Is How much as, a, as an actor are you kind of involved in those conversations, involved in the physical performance of making love in a video game. Um, thank you. Um, hello. Hi. Um, so the great thing about everybody here did the, uh, obviously Amelia's the voice of the entire game, so she's through the whole game. Uh, all the other actors, all of us did the performance capture and voice for all of our characters. Some interaction stuff is a little tricky that you have to do separately, but ultimately all of the romance stuff is done by every actor here with the, obviously the interaction with the player. So it's very important for Larian, who are amazing, and Pit Stop Productions as well, who to look after us to make intimacy coordinators accessible. Then of course, the wonderful directors, of which there were many that were incredible that we worked with, also worked with us collaboratively to make sure that we were safe, that we were happy, 
that we understood what was being asked of us, what the story was, and that we could work together to try and find the reality and the truthful moments. So it wasn't just an achievement for romancing somebody. It was actually a meaningful relationship with highs and lows, betrayals and, and love and intimacy in that way, as well as sex. And I think from my point of view, and I'm, obviously I don't want to speak for anybody else, but I know the feel of the group, that I think this was one of the, it was a real privilege to have this kind of level of maturity when you're dealing with sex and romance, and to have the, uh, the reaction from all the community to these people and, and the meaningful relationships that was created with every single one of us, I think is a real testament to the level of talent and also not only of the cast, but also of the people that go to making the game, that all of us felt, well, I'm not gonna speak for you, but I think it was the same, right? I, we all felt very comfortable, I hope, I'm not speaking for you, <laughs> sorry, uh, engaging with this work, and it was highly collaborative, so yeah. Does that help? Can I, can I just quickly add as well, that even it was safe for us, but I think the writing makes it very safe for you, and it's sex positive, and consent is at the center of every interaction, and I was so proud that that wasn't an issue for ourselves and for you, and I think years to come, we're gonna have PhDs written about how this game taught people about what a good relationship looks like, and what a bad one looks like, and how to watch out for some red flags, Astarian. Um, but what a wonderful opportunity and what a wonderful safe place for all of us to play in. Yeah. In Asterian's defense, those flags were white until they were covered with blood. So, you know, it, just, it happens, right? It happens. Um, uh, I just like to say that I don't get any sex. <laughs> but I'm very happy for you all. <laughs> DLC. I guess talking about the performance capture as well, like a lot of the um, sort of like subtle character moments, a lot has been said about sort of Shadowheart's small head movements as she talks and things like that. I mean, Will has a, a full-on dance scene. Uh, it, was there an element of needing to learn how to dance? Are you already a dancer yourself? Was there like a, a full course that you had to go through for it? <laughs> now I'm Jamaican, so the dancing's natural. <laughs> the dancing, yeah, that came easy and smooth and... Um, yeah, the romance scenes were actually my favorite scenes to do because the writing just made it so smooth and easy and the directors were so welcoming. So yeah, whenever we did romance scenes and dance scenes and intimate scenes, they were just, yeah, lovely to do. But the dancing was, was all me. <laughs> <laughs> Original moves. Original Copyright. moves, yeah. copyrighted. <laughs> There is a, a certain element of um, interest with some of the companions. Because obviously, as I said, a lot of you were kind of like presented right at the start of the game. Some of you were just straight up on the ship right in the tutorial. But as you go further and into uh, sort of like the more kind of like story-led character quest areas, there are certain characters that some people might miss. We talked about Minthara not necessarily being one that people even knew, for example, that was an option. Um, I, my, I'm sorry to say this, my fiance accidentally killed uh, Jahira without even realizing that was a thing. Did I die at Moonrise Towers? Yeah, I did, yeah. I don't know what to say to you, this is a problem. <laughs> but there is a, a sort of level, with, with RPGs of this scale, there is so much just like hidden behind certain areas, certain quests, certain decisions, certain bad dice rolls. Are there any like bits of content that you just wish more people could see? I think ultimately it's not really about that. I mean, there's reactive dialogue depending on whether people are alive or dead, whether you've done this quest or not. And I think the bottom line is it doesn't really matter in that way. It's more about, yes, there's lots of stuff in there that you can only get if you take certain actions with Gale, certain actions with Karlak or, or Halston even, et cetera, et cetera. But I think ultimately it's how the player sees the story. What is your choice? What did you decide? And that's thing right for you. So. I don't know if it's really important to say, I wish you could see this. It's more like, what do you want to do in the game, considering how wide the sandbox is, and then just do it. And then that's what the story is. And if you want to play again, you make the other choices. But I don't know if there's anything specific that I'd like them to see. It's more about what was your experience. You know what I mean? See, I, I kind of find it very difficult when people say, oh, who is your favorite companion? Because I've narrated literally every iteration of every choice you could possibly make. So I know each one of these characters 
as a, as a lover, as an enemy, as a best friend, and it, you end up getting to know them very intimately. And all I can say is that it's an excellent reflection of what it is to know a person in real life. The attitude that you go into a relationship with, even sometimes blind luck, you might see somebody as the devil or an angel, the best person in the world, or somebody you never want to be in a room with again. And they are all those things simultaneously. I think it's a really interesting psychological lesson for us all, um, that there are depths to people you just might not roll well enough to see them. <laughs> no, and I was just gonna say, isn't it cool to have one game so many endless possibilities. And then you can discover somebody that you might not have discovered in your first playthrough, uh, or make a different choice and have a completely different experience. Like that blows my mind that that's in one game, like completely. So just play the game as many times as you like. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, whilst I'm just queuing up the next question, by the way, we are going to be opening the floor to some audience questions. Uh, there is a microphone in the center of the room. I believe I can see it right now. If you would like to ask uh, one of the cast members, please, because there are, as I said, 10 people on stage. So please do point your questions at someone specific. But if you would like to ask someone, please do queue up at the microphone, get a question ready, and we will throw over to you momentarily. Uh, but just before we throw over to those audience questions, um, you, I've seen... I've been on TikTok, Lazelle. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, I've seen, um, let's say, characters from the game slipping into our reality. Uh, is there like an element of, you know, these are, um, I'll say, some of, some of the best written RPG characters we've seen, I mean, maybe ever, right? Some great performances as well, of course. Are elements of that character going to follow you through your life now? Is there, is there a, a certain part of that, being that person that will just stay with you forever now? I don't know what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> but if you are referring to a certain imp who has been following me around in justice life. Justice for I Bing Bong. <laughs> justice for Bing Bong. Hashtag no justice for Bing Bong. Who I'm now seeing on Twitter when he isn't even there. <laughs> it's the ghost of Banquo all over again for you those know, that get the rest. You know there's a mod. Somebody's made a mod. I know. Uh -huh. Stop Listen. moaning or I'll stab you again. <laughs> we don't need to open up this debate. He deserved what he got. That's all I've got to say about that. Um, and uh, yes, yeah. Murderer yeah. McGee. <laughs> so that's, that's, yeah. There are certain elements that are following us all throughout the game, aren't they? Are we not like the characters? Are we not? I mean, I mean right now, very much so, yeah. <laughs> I used to think that I was not like Lazelle at all, and the more, <laughs> the more I've discovered of myself these past four years, the more I realize that, yes, I am pretty much like Lazelle. <laughs> Deep down, but also not. <laughs> and all it took was a video filter that shrinks your nose. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing wrong with my little bat nose, okay? <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Yeah, there are certain um, things that I think everyone will now remember, but is there a sort of strangeness to, obviously you've been meeting fans throughout the show now, there will be signings going on throughout the weekend. As you're talking to people and they're sort of like highlighting their experiences, is it strange that there are so many iterations of your character that that person could be talking about, could be like referencing as they speak to you? No, because we played them. We did it. You're finding it a lot quicker than we thought you would. <laughs> there appeared to be an arms race on putting everything on YouTube in the first two weeks. And then you started playing a bit more and discovering more. And it's, it's great that you're uncovering our performances from yeah. our point of view. When people say, I love your narration, my first question always has to be, which one? Because mm. I, I genuinely don't know. Like, did you play a Shadowheart? Did you play your own custom tab? Did you play Dark Urge? Because that... that Tells me a lot about you, honestly. <laughs> okay, we will be throwing open uh, the microphone to our question and answers from the audience. Um, I will just ask again, make sure you aim your question at someone specific. It means that we can get through them a little bit quicker because we've only got about 25 or so minutes for the rest of the panel. Um, and also, I don't know if anyone here is affected by the SAG after strikes, but if there's anything on there that needs to be highlighted, please do let us know before we start. But we have someone at the question asking podium right now. Would you like to give us a name and what your question is? Hello. Oh, Jesus, that's loud. 
Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm David. I'm from Glasgow. And can I just say, on behalf, on behalf of everyone here, we love every single one of you so much. Thank you. You absolutely nailed it with the characters. We love you with all of our hearts. Someone who maybe doesn't get as much love as he should is Gail. And we love you. And uh, you deserve better than Mistra. And I'd like to ask you, Tim, who do you think is the other party member that if you're playing as Gail, is the perfect romance option to look after him properly? Uh, well, it's Tara, I think, <laughs> without a doubt. I long for that Tresem almost too much. So I think that would be, that's, that's his goal, constantly. He just wants to go home and read a book by a fire. That's or, all he wants or to do. Or eat a book, eat a book by a fire, perhaps, if it's a magical book. Exactly, well, all of that. Yeah. All of that and more. Thank you so much, you guys, you nailed it. We love you. Thank you. Thanks very much. And our next question and answer, would you like to introduce yourself and ask your question? Um, hello, I'm Sean. Uh, my question's also for Tim. Sorry. Uh, no problem. So, Go for um, it. So, Gail really endeared himself to me, like, immediately with that, like, um, hello, line read, um, when you first meet him, in, like, a really ephemeral way. So I'm wondering, when, uh, when you were doing the voice lines and stuff, how close was the voice direction, and how much were you allowed to, like, um, freely express, like, the way you wanted to do the lines, and how much was it, like you're gonna say the line this way, kind of thing. It was very, I mean, I started this whole thing having absolutely no idea what any of this was gonna sound like. So I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll start with my voice and how I would say, hello. And hopefully that will kind of, kind of you know, color everything else. And then, because I'm quite different to Gail, as many of you may have even noticed. You know, I, I read books a lot. Uh, I like magic, all of that. So I just kind of tapped into that and thought, okay, well, if, if this was me, and a lot of it is me, how would I do this? And so it just kind of stems, stems from that. And then just a lot of playing around of just, well, I wonder if I could say it like this. I wonder if I could say, stop licking the damn thing. In a, you know, like I would say that to a child. How would I do that? And then, it, yeah, it all just... You just push as much as you can, and they go, ha you can't take that out. That's staying. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Moving on, please introduce yourself and ask a question. Hi, I'm, oh, Jesus. I'm Jade from Belgium. Hello. <laughs> and, um, yeah, uh, mad respect to the cast and the writers as well. It's amazing writing. Uh, my question is for Sam. Um, I think that um, it's really interesting how Karlak is... Uh, really bulky, really strong, uh, not a typical like girly, uh, thin girl, but at the same time she's really feminine in like a beautiful, empowering way, which I think is very inspiring for a lot of players. Is there anything you can say about how that felt for you to, to play that and have that masculine and feminine combination in that character? Thank you for setting that up so beautifully, because I can answer quite quickly. For those of you who don't know, I'm non-binary. Yeah! And um, a bit like Tim, they just let us do what we wanted. It was, I think it was very much cast on our instinct. There's no time to like do that old school work where you really dig in and find a justification. It was one of those, if I was in that situation, how would I behave? And when you're that tall, n and no one is squaring up to you, you know, it's actually more about being friendly and saying, look, I'm actually not dangerous, <laughs> rather than being, you know, I'm super scary because I'm the biggest person in the room. I don't have to worry about anything. Not in Faerun. Faerun's a holiday, right, compared to what she's come from. So, yeah, they just, you know, I was obviously socialized as a woman, but I, I've sort of given all that sort of stuff up a while ago. And this, it, just for many reasons, this was a dream role. But in terms of gender expression, there was no contradiction to the way I was playing her. Nobody stopped me. So, yeah, that's why you've got what you've got. Thank you. Thanks so much for your question. Moving on. Hi, guys. I'm Luke. Uh, I'm from, well, here. Um, so a lot of the characters uh, go through a lot of development throughout the game, but I think the most distinctive character will be Shadowheart by the player's decision in Act 2, going through um, the, the Night Song quest. So I just wanted to get to know, like, 
what was it like playing the different aspects of Shadow Art, both the Salune light version and the, the dark Shadow Art version? Uh, good question. Yeah, it was a lot of work. Um, and thank God we had amazing directors. Um, but we were sometimes swapping from line to line. So we'd go, okay, that's, the, that's one path and then that's the other. This is very spoiler heavy, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Um, so so it, was, it was a real physical shift for me, but also a hugely emotional one because one had gone through a lot <laughs> and the other had forgotten a lot. Um, so yeah, it was, it was quite exhausting and there were a lot of tears from me. Like I would come home and just kind of curl up on the sofa and cry. <laughs> um, but uh, hopefully it's worth it. Um, uh, um, hey, that's what therapy is for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> My poor therapist. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but yeah, thank goodness. It, uh, that's the thing. It's, it's such a team effort all around. And thank God for amazing animators who help put our facial expressions and make them so truthful. And I'm going on a tangent now. But uh, yeah, it, it wasn't just me. It was the directors. It was everyone that made that happen. But also the amazing writing. We're all written so... I was about to swear. I stopped <laughs> effing well. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, I've just spotted one of the directors here that directed us through it. Do you want to get embarrassed and stand up, Adrian? This is Adrian. He's one of the directors. Adrian Townsend. And I also know for a fact there are amongst you hidden Larian people around there somewhere. There they are. They're responsible for it as well. Um, hello. Oh, God. Okay, first off, I'm super nervous. Uh, <laughs> so am I. To try being up here. So are we. <laughs> Uh, but hi, I'm Coco. I'm from Germany. Um, the echo is really disorientating. Um, first of all, I can say what everyone probably here feels. Uh, you've all done an outstanding job. Um, Baldur's Gate has very quickly, quickly become my favorite game of all times, and I have loved every minute of it. <laughs> um, it's fantastic and I wish I could just I think a lot of people it, it means a lot to a lot of people <laughs> I've got to cry <laughs> I'm doing my best <laughs> um, I have a question for Neil um, there's a bit of fandom discourse going around on Twitter um, <laughs> a bit um, <laughs> How would you had Canon Astarian being a father? <laughs> it's not mine, I swear. Uh, uh, okay, so, so one thing I would say is that I, I, I don't really have Canon for the character because we all did our job and it was a joy to do it with the amazing directors and the teams and the writing as well. Like my writer mainly is Stephen Rooney, he's incredible. Um, I've played Astarian. I've done his in every iteration, as Sam said, every iteration possible. So at that point, it's, it's now the players, the audience, the community, it's your characters. So I, I don't really have canon for him per se because it's not really important. What's important is if, if somebody has head canon for a character, that's meaningful. I've already done my experience with him and I loved it, and I'll never really let go of him, I think, in some ways. But for me, thank you, for me, it's kind of an obsession, actually. Uh, so for me personally, I don't have a canon for that. Although that's a new one, I gotta be honest. <laughs> he would make, I wanna say, a terrible, 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 terrible father. But that's not canon, that's not canon, all right? So whatever your canon is, you decide what he would be like, how his family unit would be. <laughs> Uh, because that's more important than my opinion. He would leave that baby in a supermarket <laughs> like that. Not even looking back. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. I'll also posit, I mean, there's no proof that he's not already a father, so <laughs> moving on to our next question. Hi, my name's... Oh, it's really loud. 
Um, my name is Jazz, and I'm sure, like me, everyone's enjoying the Twitch streams. And <laughs> my question's for Amelia. How are you finding the dark urge? I don't know what you're talking about. But <laughs> no dark urges here. Everything's fine. Nobody lost a hand, and Alfira is OK at camp. That was just an arts and crafts project that we did. And I don't think anybody needs to worry. Um, no, I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> um, I, I like that I'm assuaging my own guilt by rolling a d20 to decide whether the dark urge takes over or not. That's making me feel a lot better and a lot less guilty. Um, but I love it. It's some of my favorite narration. I like that I'm getting to play a very different character so that people watching aren't horribly confused throughout it. And I love that I'm getting to role play with my partner, Jay, um, playing two of the worst upper class twits to ever hit Faerun. They are dreadful people and shouldn't be allowed. And that kind of just makes it loads more fun. Um, but I am sorry, Tim, because I, did, I didn't oh, want to chop his hand off the dice. I thing. mean, honestly, I trusted you. Did you? Why? Not though? really, no. <laughs> well, let's, you know. Thank you so much for your question. We'll move on to our next. Uh, hi. Oh, God damn. That's really weird hearing yourself. Uh, my name's Sean. I'm from Telford. Uh, do I would say this now. Do forgive me if I st stutter a lot and all that. I, like, I'm autistic, so uh, words don't form easily, so. But I have a couple of comments that I want to make before I get onto the question. And um, one of them is for Karlak, and that is that she is best girl. Everyone can fight me. <laughs> Second comment is for Amelia. And that is that I love your outtakes on YouTube. <laughs> they are amazing and give me a laugh, and I can't wait to see more. Thank you. There are a lot more I mess up. Freak I, I can't wait. <laughs> Thank uh, you. My question here is for Neo Newborn. Uh, now, I, I will say, Neil probably won't remember me, obviously, because it's because I met, cause I met Neil back in 2019 at Birmingham Comic Con. Oh, wow. Cool. Nice to see you again. Yeah. Because last I remember yeah. you, 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 you played Kamsky in... Did you want to become human? human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, nice to meet you again, Sean. Yeah. How you doing, uh, man? I'm doing good. Uh, so, well, I don't know if this is a question I can actually ask you, given the strike and all that. Uh, but no, it's fine. That, that is not, not, wasn't a sad contract. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to know, what's it like to play a Starian who is completely different from Kamsky? Oh, well, um, well I'm, I'm, I'm a character actor. Oh. Yeah, I'm a character actor. So for me, it, I'm always trying to find difference in every character that I play. But it was nice to play somebody with such stillness who's very bound and then come to a Starian years later who's got so much flow, it's actually sometimes a problem. So I, it's really, for me as an actor, in TV and film, I had a, a lot of good work. I was very grateful for that. But I could never really get away from the way I looked. So when I came to um, games, I could take my face off, which was amazing. Because then I got to play anything that was appropriate to my ethnic background. And they gave me these very, very different characters. So to play something that's diametrically opposed, physically at least anyway, um, is a gift. It's really great. It also helps you as an actor to grow and evolve your craft, you don't get trapped in the same thing, really, I guess. So, yeah, it's, it's been wonderful, yeah, thank you. I'm not sure if that answers your question or not, but. <laughs> oh, hello. No. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> that, that does answer the question. Very really nice to see you again, man. Yeah. Come and find me later, let's have a hug, right? Huh? Come and find me later, we'll have a hug. Yeah. Also, oh. by the way, this may be a little cheeky request, but any chance we could, any chance we can, like, give a giant round of applause for the, the sign interpreters. Oh, 100%. I, Nothing I, cheeky I, about it. Yeah, I just, I just want to do that because like, they're, they're, 
they're, they're doing their job to make sure people can actually hear what's going on. And I think they, de they deserve it for the hard work that they do. Perfect. Thank you so much for your question. We will, we've welcome. got eight minutes left, so we will move on to our next one. Um, because we're a little bit low on time, we've got a big queue. If anyone would just mind just sort of getting to your question as quickly as you can, just so we get as many people through as possible. But we'll move on to our next one. Thanks so much. Don't worry, I've been preparing it for a while. Uh, <laughs> hi, my name's Diz. Uh, I live around Bristol area, and my question is for Tracy. Um, how did it feel bringing Jahira into, well, Baldur's Gate 3, you know, stepping into her shoes and really bringing her to life in your way? That, uh, what is your name? Uh, Diz, D-I-double-Z. Diz, -double -Z. Diz uh, thank you. Um, I don't know why I'm doing the accent, I just seem to switch it. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to do it. It's easy. Yeah, I do it all the time now. So uh, it was great. I loved it. Um, you know, taking over from someone else can be difficult, but do you know, I think it works okay. I think people are okay with it. I'm very happy with it. You know, I owe a lot to Heidi Shannon, who I always say, you know, whenever I see her work is amazing. So I'm so grateful that both of us get to play this wonderful, beautifully written part, and I'm so grateful for you asking the question. It's a bit of a bland answer, but that's my quick answer. Thank you. Thank you. I this the from I Bristol. Met. Yes, goodbye. I love you too. If this question isn't for Asterian and the person in the Asterian Wait, cosplay, I'll be confused. Uh, hello, my name's Anders, uh, and my question is indeed for Neil. It's, um, how did you find that your work directing has influenced and aided your acting work. Yeah. Hi Anders, nice to see you. You mean overall, like for the various games that I've been directing? Yeah. Um, I think it was kind of the other way around. I think being an actor first really helped me start directing because I understood, obviously I understand the point of view of an actor and it helped me with the language of talking to actors. It also helped me understand, okay, they may, they may need this, they may need that in terms of preparation. It also gave me a healthy respect for not telling actors how to act. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to sit there and say, move like this and do that, because that's not, that's not the relationship. So I think for me, it was like, okay, great. I know what an actor will need, or at least what I will need. And so that gives me a, a very good advantage when I'm working with somebody. Because I think it's really important to allow actors that organic space. To, like we all said, we all play with our characters, and that was down to the amazing directors uh, trusting us that we knew our characters really well, especially after the first few months, all of us got to really know our characters super well. So it, then it became, I think, a, a thing of, uh, like I worked with Emma, and I worked you know, with Sam, and I worked with a few, and Dave, you know, and it was very much, I always started the session saying, I don't know the character as well as you do, you tell me. And if I contradict, if I break the character, tell me, because they live it. You know, I'm not living. I just came in for a few sessions here and there with them. So they're, they're the experts of their characters. So I think that gave me a very healthy respect for that. And not to be too directorial about what I want. It's more like, let me help you guide to something that I have an idea for. And bring me, give me your ideas too. Um, I worked on a game called Deliver Us Mars, which has been great. And Lee's Chapel's up for best actor, I think, in um, and Golden Joystick. And that was a wonderful ensemble. And this is an amazing ensemble. Not only the 10 of us here, but the 248 actors that go to make the full cast of Oz Game. I, I want to name check so many people. There's 248. It's a little hard. But please, you know, don't, obviously we're front and center, which we greatly appreciate. I greatly appreciate. We greatly appreciate. But please check out the other actors of your favorite characters. Please get to know their work. There are some incredibly talented people. You know that you should investigate, as well as the mocap actors in Kuala Lumpur and in Quebec and in Ghent that all did all the in-game stuff. You know, there's loads of people that went to making this. Um, but yeah, anyway, as a director, I think that gave me very healthy respect. So, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Not a quick answer. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right, we have just four minutes remaining. I probably squeeze about two or three more questions in. Uh, so please introduce yourself and who is your question for? Hi, my name is Freya and I'm actually from Norwich and I have a question for Will. Um, so we've mentioned quite a lot about accessibility and things and as someone who sometimes uses a wheelchair, I actually was curious about... Pardon, I can't hear you, sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, we've talked quite a lot about accessibility and things and as someone who often uses a wheelchair, I was curious about with the motion capture, with accessibility needs, like, how is it with things like that? You've mentioned about sort of gender regarding sound and things 
that that is amazing and also intimacy so I was just curious about physical um, accessibility and also sort of mental health because that's really interesting for someone who also is very much in love with that field sure um, well I think I can speak for every actor on stage here when I say that we wanted the game to be as open as accessible as possible do you know what I mean and that everybody felt that they saw themselves reflected in each character in the game. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I'm a bit um, lost for words. I think, how did you feel playing the game? I want to ask that. How did I you mean, feel I loved it. I was more thinking on the creating with the motion capture side of things, like yeah. carving it and stuff. But as, as somebody who is... Uh, uh, disabled and things that was sure. fantastic to see such like there was representation um, there's always room for more like things like that but I mean magic can go a very long way with helping very small like difficulties so. 100 percent there's always room um, to improve on in these industries as well it was my first time doing motion capture um, I did a little bit before but this game is like my first time ever doing motion capture so it is, um, it is daunting, but, you know, you get to grips with it. Everybody's very welcoming and, um, yeah, kind of went from there, really. Thank you. Thanks so much for your question. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll try and squeeze two more in. Please come up to the microphone and introduce yourself and let us know what your question is. Hi. Well, sorry. Hi, I'm Wei. I'm from Germany. And I have a pretty unserious question for Neil. Um, the fans tend to put a Starion in Sladia and Sladia and Sladia outfits regarding my cosplay. Move the mic um, Can you like, take the mic, stand up? Okay. So, which outfit is the favorite you have seen on Instagram or Twitter or anywhere? What's your favorite slutty Starion fit? <laughs> uh. I, mean, I, know mine. I, I tend to try to not to see that. <laughs> I think it's healthier that I don't. So I don't have a favorite because I don't try and find a favorite. Do you know what I mean? I, like the, I really like seeing people's cosplay. I love that. I think it's awesome. And we've seen so many other of the characters cosplay today and do other cons. That's what I like. I like seeing people for real doing it. And it's amazing. I love it. I think... I'm your sluttiest outfit. This is my sluttiest outfit. This is my sluttiest outfit. So much fur everywhere, darling. <laughs> and on that bombshell, I think we'll end our panel here today. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you for your questions. Uh, thank you for all your cheers and applause for our wonderful class. Please do give them one last rapturous round of applause for their performances.